Sometimes these things happen in MMA. What's going on, fight fans? Welcome to These Things Happen in MMA. The goal of this channel is to highlight crazy and spectacular moments that have made mixed martial arts into what it is today. Don't forget to follow the channel on social media at These Things MMA, and the link to my merch shop is in the description below. In this episode, I'm going to talk about one of the greatest fighters the sport of mixed martial arts has ever seen. This is the story of Fedor Emelianenko's 28 fight and beaten streak. Fader's professional MMA career began with Japanese-based promotion rings, and after winning his first three fights in the span of five months, he took part in the King of Kings Open Weight Tournament. The event began on December 22, 2000, and featured a massive 32-man bracket with Emelianenko facing Brazilian prospect Ricardo Arona in the opening round. After a back-and-forth grappling battle, Fiero would win by unanimous decision, advancing to 4-0 and moving on to the next stage of the tournament. Later that same night, he then faced Japanese pioneer Tsuyoshi Kosaka. Five seconds into the contest, Fader received a cut over his right eye from the first punch thrown, and the ringside doctor called the bout after just 17 seconds of action. However, upon seeing the replay, it was clear that an elbow caused the cut, and when the fight was over, there was some controversy as elbow strikes were illegal under the tournament rules. Regardless, the stoppage remained as a win for TK and counted as Fyodor's first loss in MMA. Emelian Nickel would bounce back with a first round submission win over Mihail Apostolov, thus kicking off the beginning of his legendary run. Fyodor then took part in Ring's 2001 Openweight Tournament held in Tokyo, Japan, where he faced American Kerry Shaw in the quarterfinals. Emelian Nickel was at a clear size disadvantage, with the much bigger Shaw outweighing him by close to 60 pounds. Not wasting any time, Emelian Nickel landed a flurry of hard shots and effectively used his judo to bring the fight to the ground. Moments later, Fyodor stopped on an armbar that forced Shaw to tap at a minute and 47 seconds into the fight. The semifinals of the tournament took place three months later, and Fyodor was matched up against the 19-2 Brazilian, Hinato Babalu Sabral. As soon as the fight started, Emelianenko controlled the center of the ring and landed heavy strikes in the clinch. Eventually, Fedor would take the fight to the ground where he applied relentless pressure on Babalu for the remainder of the round. The rest of the contest saw more of the same, and when the bout was over, Fyodor won by unanimous decision. The finals of the eight-man tournament were to conclude later that same night, however Fyodor's opponent Bobby Hoffman sustained an injury earlier in the event and forfeited the match. As a result, Emelianenko was awarded the ring's heavyweight championship by default. Не знаю почему. Ну, сказал, что у него травма, но врач японский подходил к нашей команде и говорил, что у него травм нету. Можно предположить, что он испугался. Можно. И так предположить. The Ring's Absolute Class Tournament would take place over three separate events between October of 2001 and February of 2002. In the quarterfinals, Fyodor outclassed Ryushi Yanagasawa with superior grappling and route to a unanimous decision win. In the semifinals, he'd follow that victory with a dominant first round finish over Lee Hasdale. And in the finals, it only took Fedor 2 minutes and 50 seconds to knock out Chris Haseman and win the Absolute Class Tournament. Years later, Haseman vividly remembers his match against Emelianenko and praised the Russian's unique fighting style. It was his dexterity that was most impressive. Fyodor's key is being a little off-tempo. His punches come from every angle. Sometimes when you fight the most practiced and technical fighters, you can read what they're going to do. With Fyodor, though, that was never the case. He had a style and rhythm all of his own. The subsequent rise of Pride Fighting Championship would ultimately be the downfall of rings, and many of the promotion's top fighters left to join the new organization. Now 10-1 on a six-fight win streak with two tournament wins, Emelianenko would soon follow suit. Fyodor made his Pride debut on June 23, 2002 against 6'11 Dutch kickboxer Sammy Schilt. At the start of the fight, Fyodor shot in for a takedown and proceeded to chip away at Schilt with continuous pressure on the guard. It was clear that Emelianenko's game plan was to keep the fight on the ground, and rounds 2 and 3 looked identical to the first. With a unanimous decision victory, Fyodor was now starting to be looked at as a top 10 heavyweight. Emelianenko continued to impress with a near-flawless performance against Heath Herring at Pride 23. Fyodor dominated the fight, putting a beating on Herring for much of the first round, and the bout was called off by the doctors after 10 minutes. The win earned Fedor a shot at the promotion's heavyweight title, which was currently occupied by inaugural champion Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira. You're number one in the world, and he's the challenger. Do you think he's the very best challenger in the whole world? Yeah, now he is. He could prove that. He fought uh, two good guys, you know, same shield, and he uh, hit Herring, and he beat up them. So he showed he's, uh, the num he's, he's num number two now. I think it would be a very good opponent to me. The heavyweight title bout took place at Pride 25 on March 16, 2003.
Coming into the contest, Nogueira was known as one of the best jiu-jitsu practitioners in the world and was viewed as a slight favorite to win the matchup. However, when the bout started, it was Emelie and Nick who controlled the fight on the ground, essentially beating Nogueira at his own game. Rounds 2 and 3 wouldn't look much different, and Fyodor won a unanimous decision to become the new heavyweight champion of Pride. He has done it! He has done it! Fedor Hukulimenko has defied the odds! He took away the Pride heavyweight champion from the top fighter in the sport. How about that, folks? After his victory, Fyodor would have a slew of non-title bouts with multiple organizations, being that his Pride contract was non-exclusive. During this 9 month span, Emelianenko Nenko fought 4 times, winning every bout in spectacular fashion. The most notable win came against Kazuyuki Ironhead Vegeta, who almost managed to pull off an upset when he connected with an overhand right, jeopardizing Fader for the first time in his career. Emelianenko Nenko would survive though, showing his championship resolve and winning the fight by rear naked choke moments later. In 2004, Emelianenko put his title up for grabs when he took part in the Pride Heavyweight Grand Prix. The tournament was a four month long event that began at Pride Total Elimination 2004. Fyodor's opening round opponent was Mark the Hammer Coleman, the first ever UFC Heavyweight Champion and Pride's 2000 Openweight Tournament Champion. Being an accomplished wrestler, Coleman found success with his grappling and managed to control Fedor on the ground. Coleman's aggression would be his downfall though, and Emelianenko was able to lock in an armbar at 2 minutes and 11 seconds into the fight. The quarterfinals matched Fyodor against the monster Kevin Randleman at Pride Critical Countdown 2004. Randleman was another former UFC heavyweight champion and happened to be Mark Coleman's main training partner. Just as Coleman did two months earlier, Randleman used superior wrestling to get Emelianenko on the ground early. After a quick scramble, Randleman showed his ridiculous strength and pulled off one of the most incredible suplexes in MMA history, slamming Fyodor headfirst into the canvas. Oh, yeah! Like he's hearing you, boss. North south position, unbelievable. Amazingly, Emelianenko seemed unfazed, and seconds later, he submitted Randleman with a Kimura to win in dramatic fashion. The last stretch of the tournament came at Pride Final Conflict 2004. In the semifinals, Fyodor was matched up against Japanese fighter Naoya Agawa, who was undefeated at 7 0 with multiple world championships in judo. In the opening exchanges of the contest, Emelianenko badly hurt Agawa on defeat, and moments later, he submitted the judo silver medalist with an armbar. The finish came in just 54 seconds, making this the quickest match of the entire tournament. The conclusion was yet to come though, as the finals took place just hours later and saw Fyodor matched up against a familiar opponent. After his loss to Fedor at Pride 25, Nogueira went on to beat Rico Rodriguez and then Mirko Krokop, capturing the interim title in the process. The need for an interim title occurred during Fedor's stretch of non-title fights, forcing Pride to create the belt in his absence. After winning the title, Nogueira joined Emelianenko in the Grand Prix with the understanding that the winner was to become the new heavyweight champion. As fate would have it, both fighters advanced to the finals, setting up an unofficial champion vs champion rematch. As the contest was underway, it became reminiscent of their first matchup, with Fyodor landing solid ground and pound while avoiding numerous submission attempts by Nogueira. Unfortunately, halfway through the first round, there was an accidental headbutt that caused a huge gash over the right eye of Emelianenko, and the fight was ruled a no contest. For the second time now in Fader's career, he had a fight stop due to a cut, and the two bouts were the only blemish on an otherwise perfect record. The undesirable end to the Grand Prix meant that Fader would retain his heavyweight title, and an immediate rematch was scheduled for a few months later. The trilogy bout for the undisputed heavyweight championship was held on New Year's Eve at Pride Shockwave 2004. This time around there was a sense of eagerness in Fedor who was explosive early, landing hard shots on the feet and throwing Nogueira to the mat with ease. As the fight wore on, Emelianenko continued to display a mastery of the stand-up and ground games, and it appeared no matter what Nogueira tried, Emelianenko was always a couple steps ahead. The contest would go the distance, and Fyodor won a unanimous decision in an all-time classic performance. The victory not only solidified Fedor as Pride's heavyweight champion and winner of the 2004 Grand Prix, but it also established Emelianenko as one of the best fighters in the world. After settling the trilogy with Nogueira, fans were clamoring for a fight against Croatian kickboxer Mirko Krokop, however Fedor would manage to squeeze one more fight in beforehand. On April 3, 2005 at Pride Bushido 6, Emelianenko rematched Suyoshi Kosaka in a non-title bout. The fight was a one-sided beating, with Fedor landing brutal ground and pound and shrugging off any takedown attempts from TK. Ironically, the rematch would be stopped at the end of the first round due to a cut, however this time it was Kosaka who was on the receiving end. Regardless, Fedor had to avenge his only loss and the stage was now set for one of the most anticipated fights in Pride history. 
Undefeated Pride World Heavyweight Champion Fyodor Emelianenko finally defends the title against Mirko Krokop. Now, a successful title defense would further cement Emelianenko's reputation as one of the greatest combatants to ever compete in mixed martial arts. While the victory by Krokop would give him the one thing he's coveted since he began his MMA career, that being the most prestigious belt in the sport. Boss fans worldwide have waited two years to see this dream match. Mirko Krokop was widely considered to be Fyodor's toughest test to date, and by far the most dangerous striker that he's ever faced. The bout took place at Pride Final Conflict 2005 at the famous Saitama Super Arena. The first round was a back and forth chess match, with both fighters competing at a high pace for the first 10 minutes. In the second round though, Fedor did a much better job of stalling Krokop's offense, and as the fight wore on, Emelianenko slowly took over the contest with his grappling. As the third round came, it was clear that Fader was the much fresher fighter, and he would continue to pressure Krokop until the final seconds of the fight. The bout was an instant classic, and when the scorecards were read, Emelianenko won a unanimous decision to retain his title. Years later, Sports Illustrated would award the matchup their 2000s fight of the decade. After the contest, Fader would fight three more times under the Pride banner before the promotions collapse. In a non-title bout at Pride Shockwave 2005, he'd TKO the massive super heavyweight Zuluzinho in just 26 seconds. Then at Pride 32 in the promotion's US debut, he'd once again submit Mark Coleman by armbar in another non-title bout. His last fight with the organization and final title defense came against Mark Hunt at Pride Shockwave 2006. Hunt surprised everyone by controlling Emelianenko in the early moments of the contest and even had an Americana locked in that appeared to have the heavyweight champion in trouble. Fader would eventually escape though, and he submitted Hunt moments later with a Kimura, continuing his incredible reign. Shortly after, in March of 2007, the UFC would acquire the rights to Pride, and there was finally major talks of Fader joining the promotion. Later in 2007, Fader's manager, Vadim Finkelstein, would talk with ESPN regarding the negotiating process. Fader has now been the Pride heavyweight champion for four years, and I think we earned the right to negotiate a contract that suits both parties. Instead, we are faced with a blunt, you're either in or you're out. This does not really suit us. If the negotiations continue in a similar manner, we prefer to fight for less money but with an organization which is more flexible. Unfortunately, that's exactly what happened, and failed contract negotiations kept the last emperor out of the world's largest MMA promotion. In his next two bouts, he'd fight a much smaller Matt Linland in Russia and a much bigger Hongman Choi in Japan, submitting them both by armbar in the first round. It was during this time that apparel brand Affliction Clothing created Affliction Entertainment, a new MMA promotion that bore the same name. Due to their successful clothing sales and financial backing, the company had money to attract fighters with big names. Two of those big names happened to be Fedor Emelianenko and newly released former UFC heavyweight champion Tim Sylvia. The two fought at the promotion's inaugural event on July 19, 2008 in Anaheim, California. The bout would last all of 36 seconds before Emelianenko dropped Sylvia and sunk in a rear naked choke, securing the Whamma heavyweight title. I was amazed at how good Fedor is. I, uh, I went in there and was thinking about my game plan and he got off first and he heard me right away and submitted me. The guy's a stud. I don't even think he's human. I thought I was the one to beat him. I don't think, any, I, I tell you what, man, this guy is unreal. He's incredible and I don't know if anyone's going to beat him for a while. The following year, he defended his title at Affliction's second event against another former UFC heavyweight champion in Andre Olofsky. The contest took place on January 24th, 2009 and was once again held in Anaheim, California. When the fight started, Arlovski looked like a man determined, landing hard shots on the heavyweight champion frequently. The momentum was heading downhill for Fedor until he connected with an overhand right out of nowhere that knocked Arlovski out cold. The victory came at 3 minutes and 14 seconds into the first round, earning Fedor his 30th win overall. Emelianenko was then booked against his third straight former UFC heavyweight champion when he signed on to fight Josh Barnett at the next Affliction event. Unfortunately, that bout would never come to fruition as Barnett tested positive for a banned substance 11 days beforehand and the promotion was dissolved shortly after. Looking to stay busy, Fyodor would have two under-the-radar exhibition matches with M1 Global against lightweight Shinya Aoki and middleweight Gegard Musasi. Emelianenko won both matches by first round submission, however since the fights were exhibitions, the wins don't reflect on Fyodor's record or his unbeaten streak. On August 3rd, 2009, it was announced that Fedor had signed a multi-fight co-promote deal with Strikeforce and M1 Global. His first opponent would be undefeated 10-0 prospect, Brett Rogers. The fight was held on November 7th, 2009. It was the first televised event for Strikeforce with the broadcast airing on CBS. As the contest started, a cut was opened on Emelian Nichols' nose with the first jab of the fight, and much of the first round was controlled by Rogers. In the second round, Fedor appeared more in control, landing a big flurry early and looking light on his feet. Then after breaking from a clinch, Fader unloaded a lightning fast right hand that dropped Rogers and ended the contest. Oh, 
Emelianenko was now riding a 28 fight and beating streak, and the victory marked Fedor's second and final defense of the WAMA title as the sanctioning body closed shortly after. Seven months later, Fedor's next opponent would be Pride veteran Fabrizio Verdum, who recently joined Strikeforce after a stint with the UFC. The bout was scheduled for June 26, 2010 and was held in San Jose, California. As the fight began, Fedor landed a barrage of strikes that dropped Fabricio in the opening moments and he quickly swarmed the Brazilian on the ground. As he moved in for the finish, Verdum would lock in a deep triangle choke and after a brief struggle, Emelianenko was forced to tap just 1 minute and 9 seconds in, ending the last Emperor's legendary streak. News of Fader's defeat sent shockwaves throughout the MMA community. For the first time in nearly a decade, Emelianenko was on the losing end of a fight. So at the very beginning of the round, I hit Fabrizio and I wanted to finish as soon as possible and at that very moment I made a mistake. Certainly there were several moments when I could escape, but I relied on myself too much and that's why I paid for it. I'm really very sorry and um, it's a pity that I disappointed people who really believed in me and trusted in me. Everything in this life happens for some reason. If God decided it that way, that means that was the best way. Feather is the best in the world. I know I, I'm, this night I'm the, the best, I'm won this fight, but uh, Feather for me is the best in the world. Uh, 10 years now lost. Uh, I, I, I look at the, the Feather in, in pride. This feather for me is my uh, idol. My idol. Feather used to be my idol. Now I beat my idol. Can't imagine how I feel. Fader's remaining MMA career would have its ups and downs, with the legendary fighter going 8 and 4 since losing to Verdum. His retirement bout is set to take place on October 23, 2021, against Timothy Johnson at Bellator 269. Without a doubt, Fedor Emelianenko's 28 fight and beating streak is up there with the best of all time. If you add in the two exhibition matches, that streak increases to 30. Once more, if you're also willing to forgive the freak loss in his fifth bout, that unbeaten streak increases to a staggering 34 fights. Many longtime fans consider Fedor to be the greatest mixed martial artist of all time, or at the very least, the best heavyweight of all time. It goes without saying that Fedor Emelianenko is a special talent rarely seen in mixed martial arts, so let us never forget this legendary fighter and his extraordinary achievements. As always, I posted some related material in the description for those interested. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below with the topic you'd like to hear me cover in a future episode. Again, don't forget to follow the channel on social media at These Things MMA, and the link to my merch shop is in the description below. Thanks for watching and supporting my channel. What about your favorite fight? Is there a fight that you look back on? There has to be one that sticks out, right? No, должен быть какой-то один, который вот так. Ну, все бои по-своему такие интересные, и каждый можно да что-то отметить в каждом бою. All the fights were interesting, mm -hmm. you know, for some particular reason, and you can find something in each fight. Mm -hmm. Наверное, самый, который бы выделить, это, наверное, первый бой с, с Антонио Родриго на Гуэрой. But maybe one fight, which I can differentiate from others, that will be the first fight with Antonio Родриго на Гуэрой. Родриго на Гуэрой. Big night. И бой с Мирко Крокоп. And the fight with Мирко Крокоп. Sometimes these things happen in MMA.